Ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you to 1812 Objects to Discover, a series of three vignettes showcasing unreleased artifacts of the Chateau Ramsey in connection with certain characters and events that took place during the War of 1812. This capsule, entitled 1812, Charles-Michel d'Irembéry de Salaberry and the Canadian Approach, will allow you to learn more about the one who became the hero of Chateau Gay and his noble family. You'll also meet the Duke of Kent and some artists such as painter and miniaturist Anson Dickinson and the Danish Baron Helmut von der King Humfeld. Please join me on this very informative journey through history. For the Canadian people, the War of 1812 is the story of the defense of the colony against the United States, this neighbor of a great power and a great confidence, as demonstrated by this quote from Jacob Klein, a 13-year-old Canadian. The American morale was very high, and when I said I was Canadian, one of the officers laughed and said, you'll soon be governed by the U.S. government, my boy. I was quite rebellious, like most boys my age, and I told him, I'm not sure about that. The War of 1812 is thus at a turning point in the history of our country, a defense that allowed the British North America to become an independent country. But we cannot address the heroic figures of 1812 without a look at Charles-Michel d'Irembéry de Salaberry, hero of Châteauguay, and his noble family. The Irembéry de Salaberry are descendants of old French nobility of Basque origin. Several generations of this family have played an important role in either the military or politics. This coat button belonged to Michel de Salaberry, grandfather of our hero and first of this family to settle in New France. Former captain in the French Navy, he had an only son, Louis Antoine who fought the Americans during the first American invasion in 1776. Louis Antoine had seven children, including Charles Michel. Interesting anecdote, Louis Antoine de Salaberry befriended Edward Augustus, Duke of Kent, son of King George III of Great Britain and father of the future Queen Victoria during his first visit to Canada in 1791. From royal blood, the Duke of Kent, depicted in this painting, will be introduced to the high bourgeois society of Quebec and Beauport. He enjoyed the warm welcome he received so much that he purchased a summer house in Sorel. This two-story stone house, now called the Governor's House, is on the Richelieu River on the Chemin des Patriotes. Before leaving the country, the Duke promised Louis-Antoine de Salaberry that he would watch over the destiny of his four sons in England. The Duke of Kent enrolled them in good schools and gave them their first uniforms, military positions, and titles. Here is a regulatory red jacket that belonged to Charles-Michel de Salaberry. He most likely received it from the Duke of Kent when he was in command of an infantry company in the 1st Battalion of the 60th Royal American Regiment of Foot. It's decorated with an attractive gold braid around the neck and the cuffs. Also worn by Charles-Michel d'Irembéry de Salaberry is one of the last vestiges of medieval armor, the officer's gorget, throat ornament made of metal and brass. The middle bears an R, probably for royal, with the crown of England and the inscription Milice Canadienne. Chateau Ramsey also has a gorget that belonged to Charles Michel's father, Louis Antoine. Since gorgets were uncommon, it's likely that these two were given to the two men by the Duke of Kent. Born in Beauport on November 17, 1778, Charles Michel d'Irembéry de Salaberry enlisted as a volunteer in the British infantry at the age of 14. De Salaberry will initially be stationed in Quebec City, then transferred to the West Indies in 1794. At the end of 1799, de Salaberry was promoted captain, and in June 1803, he was given command of a company in the 1st Battalion of the 60th Royal American Regiment of Foot. In early 1806, 
Thanks to the Duke of Kent's influence, de Salaberry is transferred to the 5th Battalion of the 60th Royal American Regiment of Foot, led by Francis de Ruttenberg, a pioneer in light infantry and rifle tactics. In June 1810, Rottenberg was posted in Lower Canada, and de Salaberry followed as an aide-de-camp. In July 1811, de Salaberry obtained his commission as major, and in 1812, he proposed the formation of a provincial corps, the Canadian Voltigeurs. On October 26, 1813, he will become famous when he repelled a force of more than 5,000 Americans in Chateau Gay. This painting, done in 1897 by artist Donald Guthrie McNabb, shows Charles Michel de Salaberry wearing the uniform of an officer of the Canadian Voltigeurs. The round medal on his chest is the field officer's gold medal, a very rare decoration at the time. This watercolor on ivory miniature of Charles Michel d'Irumberry de Salaberry was painted by Anson Dickinson in 1825. Anson Dickinson, born in 1779, is an American painter who was one of the first to be elected to the American Academy of the Fine Arts. Fortunately for art historians, throughout his 50-year career, Dickinson kept a notebook documenting the 1,500 subjects he painted with dates, locations, and prices. Dickinson also produced miniatures of Louis Antoine, Charles Michel's father, and Charles Michel's wife from an illustrious bourgeois family, Marianne Julie Hertel. These paintings are in carved, gilded wooden frames. In 1826, a large number of prints of de Salaberry were produced by New Yorker engraver Asher Brown Durand, based on the Salaberry miniature painted by Dickinson. They were ordered by Jacques Vigé, the first mayor of Montreal and former captain of the Canadian Voltigeurs, who, like many others, was a great admirer of Charles Michel de Salaberry. Louis Joseph Papineau, member of a well known clan of influential families in Montreal at the time, like the Cheriers, Papineaus, and Vigés, received a copy of this print. Upon receiving it, Louis Joseph Papineau sent a letter dated April 9, 1826, to Mr. Vigé. My dear sir, I am very pleased and grateful to receive this print from you portraying Colonel de Salaberry, guiding his countrymen to the field of honor. The example he sets for his contemporaries, for you, for me, who have the good fortune to know him, one more reason to inspire our devotion to the cause of the motherland. Louis-Joseph Papineau. Here is a bicorn cocked hat made of beaver, silk, leather, cotton, gold wire, metal, and paperboard that belonged to Charles Michel de Salaberry, as we can see in this picture. It was probably worn during the Battle of Chateauguay. The bicorn is a hat whose brim forms two points. It was originally designed as riding headgear, but was part of officers' uniforms in many countries from the 18th to the 20th century. This painting depicts the Battle of Chateauguay, painted by artist Evino Helmut von der Kink Homfeld. Born in 1835, Baron Homfeld was a well-known Danish artist and lived until 1912. His oil paintings are considered extremely rare since most are found in private collections. In this painting, you can see soldiers led by Charles Michel de Salaberry on their way to face the American troops. The Battle of Chateauguay took place on October 26, 1813, and is considered one of the great feats of arms in Canadian history. Here is a metal and ivory sword that belonged to another hero of Chateauguay, Captain François-Antoine Larocque, who also received a Chateauguay medal. Born in L'Assomption, Larocque was a Quebec businessman in the fur trade. During the War of 1812, he was captain of the 5th Battalion of Incorporated Militia. This battalion was renamed the Canadian Chasseurs, which explains the inscription, 5e Bataillon des Chasseurs Canadiens. In conclusion, more than 10,000 French Canadians fought actively to resist the American invasion and keep their land. Without their participation, as in the Battle of Chateauguay, 
our beautiful country would probably not be as we know it today. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll leave you with this question that comes to mind. According to you, did Charles-Michel de Salaberry receive the honors he deserved?